shake my hand and welcome to another video i hope you're doing well we're looking at nzd jpy today and i thought you know let's just quickly have a look at what our retail traders think of nzd jpy you know and see you know how how, how things are hanging right so looks like about those who are actively trading nzd jpy about 72 percent of them are trying to sell it right 72 percent uh, a short sorry there you go so we've got about 207 lots it's not a lot but it, it, it is a you know a sizable position but it's really not a big deal but about yeah 207 lot sizes about 1841 sell positions and then 28 percent along looking at about 78 uh, lot size 746 so it's, it's not really a big group of traders are uh, trading uh, NZD JPY for either buying or selling, but those who are the majority are are quite bearish. So let's just break this thing down, man. I'm looking at this chart and I can see it really served more as an analytical chart for me last year. I don't, I, I, I know I had a few short term trades. Whenever I see these vertical lines, excuse me, on my chart, then I know that there's some day trading going. Most likely running scenario analysis. You're going to see it clearly if I go to the daily time frame or on the one hour chart, right? So, probably a specific month, most likely the month of August, I'm sure. Uh, there we go, August to October, right? So, so, this was just on the one hour time frame running scenario analysis, either doing back testing or taking very short term trades. I cannot remember, to be honest with you, right? But I, I don't think this is like a, a chart that I'm most popular or most active with, right? So, we're going to break it down together bearing in mind that for this coming week ahead that is the week of um i guess the 8th of may uh, all the way to the 12th of may right retail traders are looking to sell nzd jpi with about 28 percent looking to buy it right so let's uh, uh, i mean okay let's start at the very beginning i'm happy to remove everything right i'm happy to remove everything right so this is what our chart looks like let's let's take our sweet time and skin this thing Right, on the 12th month chart, every single candlestick represents one year. Every single candlestick represents 12 months of trading. And we can all agree that we've finally arrived at the institutional supply. Might not be the highest point, might not be the major turning point, but definitely institutional supply is live and well on the one year chart. And remember, please expect things to move extremely painfully slowly on this time frame, right? You can look at this chart for three months, six months, and it will probably look exactly the same with a slight difference in candlestick size. But for the most part, this chart is not meant to, 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 to dramatically change within short spells, right? We just really want to understand what where is price right now and where is price going in based on who is in control of price at the moment and right now markets happily left a demand in 2020 right with that covid strike the markets also went risk on despite the different crashes that went on if you look at those charts from about march of 2020 markets went crazy ballistically risk on right so we had a very very strong bullish assets reacting to the crisis and that's based on the reaction of the macroeconomics governments printing money you know and all sorts of things like that right so price made contact with a demand from 2012 i guess and then roughly almost 10 years later in 2020 2021 markets made contact with that same demand and then markets come back to a supply that was made in 2014 2015 and in 2023 shy of one year or two years 10 years later Markets have arrived back at a supply, right? First corner of the supply was obviously last year. Price seems to be feeling 
this week here, but we don't really know how this candlestick is going to look by December because we can't necessarily judge an open candlestick until it's closed, right? So that's what we have right now. So if you ask me what area of value is in control of NZDJPY, on the 12 month chart, it's definitely a supply because that's what price is leaving, right? Leaving from the supply. On the three month chart, we get an interesting outlook, poor imbalance in terms of supplies absolutely poor uh, if you look left you get a second supply as well with a very poor imbalance as well right so not the type of supplies i would put my faith in not the type of supplies i would want to risk a lot of money on um, um from, from, from what i'm looking at here anyways right if i tighten this area here uh, and say look man that's my proximal line then we get markets pretty much basing and consolidating just before they make contact and if we take the area of competition, then we get something that looks like this, right? Either way, on the 12 month chart, if you remember, we did say that markets have made contact. And so the proximal line that I drew is fundamentally based on the 12 month chart so far, up until I get something much more neater. And on the three months chart, it would look something like this, right? Trying to cover down there, right? And, and, and this is really all we have, right? We've got markets leaving a weak supply, creating a better strong supply, but breaking above it right and then creating uh some type of bullish tech momentum right to the upside not necessarily a bullish engulfment or maybe it is maybe it is and i'm wrong okay i, I wouldn't argue right so maybe it is maybe that's a bullish engulfing candle uh stick sure so so markets are becoming slightly more bullish just outside the supply taking out a valid supply by opening here and closing you know slightly higher you know with the wick and then on the left we don't really have a strong imbalance right so so that's what we have on the governing time frame we then have something that looks like this on the governing time frame we can then start to tighten our areas of value right so this area is made out of two supplies one and two if i take the area of competition of supply one almost basically covers the proximal line of supply too which means i have no choice but to swallow both these supplies together and take the area of competition right there so you know assuming that you know markets are very close to 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 to, to make in contact of a governing supply and then also that week that took out um a supply earlier on on the three months chart that week on the governing time frame created a bearish engulfing pattern and this is markets now trying to make their way back now if we truly believe and we 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 we, we, we are you know very biased to the downside right as sellers then here's to hope you that market can make contact here and then drop or market can break through here and make contact with a better higher supply which is much more ideal and then drop right so i'm the type of guy who's happy to ignore the first move and rather wait for markets to come all the way to the higher supply and then drop and where would this drop go not a valid demand right might have momentum might have you know some type of imbalance price leaving but not the 365 demand which means this will be our first nearest and dearest target. So even if markets will move into the upside, you know, price takes time and price moves. And this is one way price could go. All right. This is literally one way price could go. And, you know, I'd be looking forward to trading something like this. If it, if it panned out, uh, at least on the entry point perspective, which we now need to keep investigating as we move to the weekly time frame. Okay, just for kicks, I'm gonna draw a weekly trend line. All right, turns out it is not at all just for kicks. It's definitely substantial, right? You can see markets have kind of like relied on the psychological incline on the weekly time frame. Now I'm gonna look for valid supplies on the weekly time frame right markets literally moved above this zone so that doesn't matter uh you know not the best imbalance here really not the best imbalance so even on the weekly time frame i'm not getting a strong sell sense on the or, or, or on the supplies right i am not i'm not that excited about taking sales there 
bullish engulfing, right? Consolidation, bullish engulfing to the upside, taking out this lower supply, which took out this lower supply, right? So there's definitely still some buy side momentum right now uh, on the weekly time frame, but it's heading towards potentially a governing supply that we've marked out. And if I look left, perchance, you know, perhaps looking for a better supply. This is what I find. Right, so that blue line is problem number one, and I wonder if price has already made contact. Yep. So this this fall here is actually a reaction to a real supply, right? A supply on the far left where price has already hit once, twice, all right? Where price is basically coming from. Now, if this supply breaks, then we're looking at markets moving up into the yellow zone all the way there. And that could hold a lot of, you know, weight for price, given the ultimate highest point within this whole thing is a ready move to spark price going down. So now we're looking at focusing on this supply that was created as price was making its way down, right? And these two clusters are joined together, all right? So that's the the main cell block area I would be looking at. And if we just were to tighten our areas of value, it would look something like this. Then I go to the daily time frame. That can make sense. Right, yo. I hope you guys don't forget to like, please hit the like button. I appreciate that. Oh no, I moved that by mistake. Goodness gracious. Right. So this is the daily time frame. I'm going to start here first. Right. Clean. Maybe price makes contact. Price drops. Price makes contact. Price drops. Price makes contact. Right. So, so this has been used out a bit. Clean imbalance here as well. Highest point. Imbalance. Price comes back. Imbalance. Right, so this looks something like this. Right, beautiful imbalance. Markets try to make it all the way up, they don't. Markets close slightly shy here, and this looks like this. Imbalance. And then there's also this, sorry guys, it's just, this is how you need to think about price, right? So a, a, a weekly supply zone will be safer or rather entries inside these zones that I've marked out for you, all stop losses would be so much safer outside a weekly area of value. All distal lines would work out so much safer. For this is for only a swing trader. If you're a day trader, your, your whole strategy needs to be different. But for a swing trader, then you need to be willing to risk appropriately and have your distal line on this specific chart outside the weekly because of the of how big some of these valid zones are that price still needs to navigate across, right? All of this stuff is valid. And remember, look at where my blue line is intersecting, right? So we've got potentially here a fresh touch that price never actually fully managed to come back to. So this could be a, a very good place to, 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 to get your first few sales. But be warned, right? Once you're inside such a sell zone, any of these supplies are supposed to work. Any of these supplies could be used rather, right? So markets could want to go higher within the weekly area of value or markets would want to go low, right? It's really up to price and you really, really, really have to respect that. Yeah, it's taking forever to get to the other side. But yeah, just just a quick announcement. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I hope this stuff is helping you. Uh, let me know how you envision I can make it better in the comment section. I'll definitely read all the comments and I will absolutely take your suggestions seriously. Uh, don't forget to check out any link uh, down below in the description. There's a link to join us as an academy. There's a link to take part in our free mail list. Etc. Right. So up above, especially these green zones, which really shouldn't be green but should be yellow, right? These are these are these are 
the type of supplies you want to really take care of and, and respect because they are they are nested supplies, right? And then we've got this situation here on the daily time frame. This is where price closed on Friday. Markets creating equal highs here, so markets have to break them because it's most likely a reflection of some liquidity trapped up there that markets need to grab. And then on this lower weekly area of value on the daily time frame, this is exactly where price needs to, 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 to stop and interact before moving forward, right? This is a very, very important area of value that price needs to get through. Yes, markets might break it because it's a higher supply, but nonetheless, we cannot ignore it, right? So if markets are buying right now and they're buying to clear, you can see bullish engulfing pattern, then please note that you might expect this to happen. Price still moving slightly further ahead, and this is like really nice. It's nice when markets just clearly create some clean, clean, clean liquidity grabs here like that. Very nice. Support and resistance stuff. Very, very easy money for, for the markets, right? So we shall see, but there's still about... There is still about... 245 or so pips to the to, to, to the next uh, uh, supply, right? And then within there, I'm pretty sure markets would have decided whether they're taking this supply or they're taking that one. Keep track of this asset on your COT reports. Watch them on Tuesdays when they either add or or, or reduce their, 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 their longs, right? And whether they're taking profits or not. All of that information, that COT data, use it, use it, use it to make yourself money. Uh, 365, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.